Hey fellow developers, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we will see what the new React compiler does and how we can use it. I can guarantee you that after the end of this video, you will fall in love with the new React compiler. I'm pretty excited. So without any delay, let's get started. So here I have built a very small mini project, which is a to-do list. And using this project, we will visualize the power of the React compiler. So what this to do list does is basically if I type apple and click on add, it will add that item into the list and I can add as many items as I want. There's no limit to it. So this is a very simple to do project. So now going to the code, you will see that this is a white application and it has two components app and list item. So in the app component, you will see that we have a form, which is basically this input and this add button. And below that I'm rendering the list of items, which is this. So now if I add a console log inside of list items and let's say, Hey, I'm rendering. Now if I save and then go to this project and click on inspect console and let's just refresh the page to start from fresh. Now, I'm going to add one item and if you see it has rendered twice. So basically the list item component has rendered twice. And now if you are wondering why it is rendering twice, then it's nothing to worry about because this is just a default behavior in development environment or local environment when you're using strict mode. So if you do not believe me, let's just see what happens if we comment the strict mode. So now if I save and go back to a project, refresh, add one item. And you can see now it is just rendering once. Okay. So let's keep it this way so that there is no confusion. Now the interesting part is if you observe carefully, as I type, it is re-rendering my list item component. So I've typed four characters and hence it has rendered the list item component four times. So now why this behavior? So if we go back to the code, you can see that in the app component, we have used the list item component and by the rules of react, a component re-renders whenever its state or any prop passed to it changes. So in this case, what is happening is we have a state called as item and we are using this on our input field. And as we are typing, it is also updating this item state and hence it is triggering a re-render of the app component. Now, since list item is inside of the app component, it is also getting re-rendered in this process. Now you might think that it is not a big deal, but imagine you have five to six components inside of this app component and those components have their own children component. So let's assume list item has its own children component. So you can now visualize the scale of re-renders, right? One small change in a parent component can trigger re-renders throughout its children components. So this can be a big issue or a performance bottleneck in huge react applications. So to solve this issue and prevent unnecessary re-renders, React provides us few methods. I'm sure you all have heard about memo, use memo and use callback. In this case, we will be using the memo function to memoize or cache our list item component. So let's just wrap our list item component inside of the memo function. Hit the save button. And now if we go to our project, let's just refresh the page add one item apple and now if you see when i type our list item component is not getting re-rendered which is great right but here comes another issue what we just did is basically prevent the re-render of list item component when the item state changes but by the rules of react list item component will still re-render if any of its prop changes here in this case if you see title is something which will never change and hence this will not trigger a re-render. But what if we add such a prop that changes on every re-render of the app component by this, what I mean is let's say I have a function called as handle delete item. And now if I pass this function as a prop to our list item component, okay. So let's name the prop as handle delete item. And now here I'm going to invoke this function and what it requires is an index. So let's give that. Now let's go to the list item component. And here I'm going to extract the handle delete item prop. And now I'm going to add a button 
which will basically say delete and here let's do on click handle delete item so whenever we click on the delete button it should remove that item from our to-do list so hit the save go back to our project and now if you see here we have the button and when i click on it it removes the list item which is great we have our feature which is working no issues but now let's see what happens if we add an item and i type something as you can see this list item component is again getting re-rendered so we are back to square one let's see why is this happening here if you see the list item component will only re-render at least in our case when any of its prop changes so as soon as we introduced a new prop handle delete item the previous issue of re-renders came back but why this is because we have written the handle delete item function inside the app component so whenever the app component re-renders it creates a new instance of the handle delete item function and since we are passing this function as a prop to the list item component the prop also gets changed on every render of the app component hence this also triggers a re-render of the list item component so how can we fix this you can say that wrap the handle delete item function in a use callback which is absolutely true so let's just do that and see what happens and this use callback will run only once when the component or when the app component first mounts so now when i save and go to our project refresh the page add one item and let's type again you can see that this is again getting re-rendered but we are adding the use callback so what is happening now if you see we are calling or invoking this hand and delete item function in a function so this is also a function right so this is also a function which gets created on every render so somehow what we need to do is we need to just pass this handle delete item function like this and then with it let's also pass the index of the list item i'm going to create a new prop let's name it as list item index and pass idx now let's go to our list item component and here extract out the list item index prop and now in the on click function what we can do is we can basically invoke the handle delete item function with the list item index now if we go back to our code and let's refresh our page add one item and now if you see whenever i type it is not re-rendering our list item component right so this is a very important thing in react always try to pass the function as a prop instead of calling that function in the prop itself so avoid doing this 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 pattern avoid doing this as much as possible to prevent unnecessary re-renders because even by using use callback it is meaningless if we are doing or if we are passing a prop in this manner so let's revert this so now you can visualize the importance of memoization or caching in react to prevent unnecessary re-renders of components but until now this was an extra overhead so as a developer you have to make sure which components you want to memoize which functions you want to memoize what dependencies you want to pass in the use callback all this you had to keep in mind when developing react applications but now with the introduction of react compiler all this manual overhead are gone you write components and the react compiler will memoize it automatically for you if you do not believe me let's add the react compiler and check what it does to our code but before that make sure you have react 19 as you can see we have react 18 so let's install the latest version of react which is 19 to do that, we have to install react at the rate rc and react dom at the rate rc. This will install the latest version of react which is 19. So with react 19 in place, let's install the react compiler itself. So now let's go to our web browser and search for react compiler. We can click on the first link as this is the official React website. Here we will find everything we need to know about the new React compiler. You can read this whenever you get time. But for us, the point of interest will be what does the compiler do and how we can use it. So now, coming to the first point, what does the compiler do? If we look into this, 
It says that as of today, the React compiler is able to skip cascading re-rendering of components and also skip expensive calculations from outside of React. Now, if we look specifically into the first issue which the compiler is solving, you will recall that this is the same exact issue that we solved on our project using the memo function and the use callback hook. So now with the help of the React compiler, we won't have to handle all those memo use callback that we did on our project. It will be handled automatically when we use the React compiler. So let's install the compiler and check whether it is actually able to optimize the list item component and the handle delete item function without the need of memo function and the use callback hook. But before we install it, if we just scroll down, we can see that there is a command which basically scans our code base and tells us how many components it is able to successfully optimize. So if we just copy it, go to our code base and run the command, we can see that it has successfully compiled two out of two components, which is really great. But in older code bases, this number might be lesser than the total number of components, which is absolutely fine because there is a possibility the components are not well written or it is not following the rules of React. So in those cases, the compiler will just skip optimizing those components and move ahead. Now let's finally install the React compiler. So if we go back to the website and scroll down, we can see that this is the command to install the compiler. So let's copy this, go to our code base and run it. So here we have successfully installed the compiler. So now it's time to configure it. For that, we will again go back to the website and you can see that just below there is a wheat section. So basically we will copy this config and paste it inside of wheat.config.js on our project. So since we do not have this react compiler config, we can just remove it. And now with this, we have successfully configured our wheat with the new react compiler. Just a heads up. So initially I installed react SWC on this application and for some reasons, the compiler was not working or compatible with this react. As a result, I switched to just react and then it was working. So this is just kind of a disclaimer if you're stuck. Now let's go to the app component and see what happens if we remove the memo function and the use callback hook. Let's save it. And if we go back to the website and try to replicate the previous scenario. So if I add an item called apple and now if I type you can see that this list item component is not re-rendering without even using the use callback hook and the memo function. Isn't it great? So this proves that the React compiler is working and it is successfully able to optimize the list item component. With this, we have come to the end of this video. And I just want to say that I'm really, really excited for the future of React and we all should be because in the near future, it will be much, much easier to write faster and better react code. So again, let's wrap it up here. And if you have gained some knowledge out of this video, please make sure to subscribe, like it, and also share it with your friends or on your socials. And finally, of course, please take care. Bye-bye. See you on the next video.